John will be speaking today as the innovative planning pathway, and he's on his level three presentation, present a proposal. And so the topic of the speech today, in line with the topic, is I have a proposal for you. Please welcome John Singer. Madam Toastmasters, fellow Toastmasters and guests, it's great to be here with you again today and to present another speech to you. When you look out at the world around us today, there is a lot of commotion going on, right? For example, we have traffic. Always crazy, right? We have the coronavirus, right? Causing all this ruckus, particularly in Asia and with Ellie, so everyone will keep your distance from her, right? We have Brandy leaving us, right? Another source of craziness and frustration. Yeah, she is. When you, when you run across things along these lines, what is your initial reaction? When someone pulls in front of you, what do you want to do? You want to just run, <laughs> run right into them, right? You want to like go crazy. When you start hearing all these rumors about the coronavirus coming, what do you want to do? I want to hold myself up in my house with all my food storage, right? Not let anyone in. Don't come near me. So natural responses to these are anger, frustration, fear, things along these lines. I wanted to share with you an experience that I had when I was working on my undergraduate degree at Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. I was married at the time. D1 and D2 were along the way. We had two young daughters. They were both four or five-ish, somewhere around that, those lines. We were living in married student housing. Above us, we had some really great neighbors, John and Tracy Tag. They had two little boys right about the same age as our, our little daughters. And we had talked them into going to Colorado with us over the, over the Memorial Day weekend to run this great race called the Boulder Boulder, which attracts 30, 40,000 people each year. So Memorial Day came, we all piled into our original Dodge Caravan, the original minivan, <laughs> and started our trek across the desert of Utah to Colorful, Colorado. As we got outside of Green River, Utah, just outside of Green River, probably 20 miles, we got a flat tire. So I pull over to the side of the road, everyone piles out of the minivan, John, or Julie and Tracy are corralling the four kids. John and I are getting the jack out, pulling the spare tire out, fixing the, the tire. We had just about got the tire fixed when a white, somewhat clunkety car pulled up in fr behind us. Two individuals, or a man and a wife, popped out with their young son. He must have been about 13 or 14-ish. Not, not the greatest clothes that they had on. I have to say that my initial impression, I... I judge them probably more harshly than I should have with my initial impressions of them. And I, my initial thought was, what, what do these folks want? They came up, they had this, he pulled this little jack out of the back of his trunk, which he had kind of had wired shut. He came up and offered to help. We pretty much had the, the tire on, and we, we thanked him and said, well, we're, we're good, thanks. If you would have come a few minutes earlier, that would have been great. But I think we're good, thanks. So everyone hopped back in their cars, they drove off. We went to pull to, to make a U-turn. We were kind of on a little bit of a decline. We went to make a U-turn and drive back into Green River, Utah, so that we could get the tire fixed. Well, as I did that, I rolled the little donut off the rim. So now we have a flat tire, a flat donut, and we're out in the middle of the desert, right? In May. So I'm like, oh goodness, when it rains, it pours. And the folks had already driven off. So I hop out, I grab the original tire that went flat. My wife and I start walking into Green River. To make a long story short, another gentleman had picked us up. He just dropped us off on the, the outskirt of Green River. We picked up the tire again, started walking in. And as we did so, this same couple who had gone back to Green River were going the opposite direction, <laughs> saw us walking into town, carrying a tire, flipped the car around, insisted that we get in their car, Took us to a tire de tire dealership. We got the we got the tire fixed. They're back there straightening up. I'm looking out the windows. We're getting the tire fixed, and they're back there straightening their car car up so it'll be all nice and neat for us. And we hop back in their car. They drove us back out 20 miles out of town. They pulled the jack back out, jacked the car up for us. We got the tire fixed. And by that point, my attitude <laughs> towards these people had changed dramatically. Where I thought initially they might have been up to <laughs> some nefarious activities of some sort, 
when in reality, <coughs> all they wanted to do was tell. And one of their plans, so we, all of us, were thanking them profusely for the service that they had rendered to us that particular day and for spending half their day carting us back and forth out of Green River to fix the stupid <coughs> tires so that we could go on our way. But their parting comments to us were, you know, part of the reason why we stopped today is we have been in the same situation as you <laughs> and no one ever stopped. And I hate to say that the way that they, my initial attitude with them was I probably would have been a, one of those people that did not stop as well. And so I learned a great lesson that day. And my proposal to you today is there's so many things going on. Each and every day we can probably carve a little bit of time out of all of our busy schedules and rather than react kind of in the natural course of things, but to provide either random or intentional little acts of service throughout the course of our day. And rather than being natural, and I'm going to hand these out, just take one and pass them around. If you, if you need some ideas, here are some, some definite ideas. This also kind of coincides, there's, I think it's like random act of kindness week with the little fitness thing that's, or not the fitness, the little points thing, and if you do like the bingo card, you would get additional points for doing something on those lines. If you look at the card here, I especially like number five, share your toys with your siblings. That's always <laughs> a good one. I always get you bonus points. And also, number eight is a good one too. If you're seeking to do a random act of kindness in that regard, my yard always needs some assistance as well. So <laughs> let me know, I'd be happy to help you out in that regard. But again, I think that as we go through our days, we can allow these little acts of frustration to either be little storms <laughs> that come into our lives and that darken and rain upon our days. But if we take time to do these little acts, acts of kindness, intentional or random, whatever they may be, those are like the little rays of sunshine that come back into our life and lighten and brighten our day. <laughs> but not only brighten our day, help and brighten those days, but help to brighten those days of those around us. And I'll just leave you with the final quote from Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Mm -hmm.